everybody, welcome to the Brain Talk webinar. Brain Talk webinar is an online platform where scientists, researchers, and early stage researchers have an opportunity to present their research work, which is related to machine learning and computational science. I am Sajjad Ahmadi from University of Oslo. It gives me a great pleasure to co-chair this webinar with Moin Nagavi from Simula Research Lab and Gadi al Haj from University of Oslo. I would like to give the stage to Moin. Moin. Thank you so much. Um, today we have two interesting presentations uh, and after each of the presentation, we will have a question and answer session and audiences can post their questions on YouTube live stream. Um, the first presentation will be given by Aditya Gupta uh, a little introduction about uh, Aditya. So Aditya completed his, his master's degree in signal processing in 2014 at College of Engineering uh, in Pune in India. And uh, he completed his PhD in 2019 at Vis West Raya National Institute of Technology um, from India. And currently Aditya is working as a postdoctoral research fellow at the Center of Artificial Intelligence at University of Agder, uh, Norway. His uh, project is developing automated artificial intelligence uh, based tools uh, to monitor, analyze and provide decision support for the health and welfare of the farmed fish. Uh, the area of his research is artificial intelligence for aquaculture biomedical signal processing, medical image processing, and water resource management for smart cities. Hello, Ditya. The floor is yours. We are looking forward to your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Moin, for my nice introduction. So basically, I will be uh, talking uh, in a very short about the use of AI for fish agriculture. Basically, uh, we only think uh, AI more uh, if with respect to that of uh, human beings' perspective, when they use it for, but there is a lot of uh, applications when it comes to aquaculture also. So I'm going to give a brief uh, discussion about aquaculture from industry point of view uh, because currently I'm working with industry. Uh, so basically, what are their requirements and what are the future challenges that uh, researchers who are coming in future or like we needs to uh, take care of it. So basically, uh, before starting, I just want to uh, tell you the what are the outline of the project. So basically, I have divided this in the objective of the lecture basically, and then followed by some of the data sets that I have uh, used, followed by some of the flowcharts, the methodology, and then the results and uh, some of the references. So uh, it is very important to deliver a lecture with an objective. Uh, so my objective for this lecture is to make audience aware about current AI technology. And if I talk specifically, then it is for aquaculture industry. And from implementation point of view, what are the AI technology that has been currently used? So that is something which I will be discussing. Followed by my third objective is to discuss different uh, challenges in the future. So next thing is the uh, what we are doing. So basically in one of our project, uh, so we are working with uh, IMR uh, and then veterinarian institutes and then Creative and UIA. So they all have combined to work uh, to work for fish welfare and they are planning to develop a welfare and a dead pet scanner. So let me give you a brief introduction about what is welfare and a dead pet scanner. So uh, as you know that uh, salmon is very important uh, when it comes to Norway because uh, it covers an important uh, part of, of food for each and every population. So uh, every salmon which is farmed so suffers from a lot of irregularities. So it is very important to identify this irregularity so that we can uh, we can help farmers in increasing their uh, output and yield. So that's why uh, uh, we have targeted to develop a dead fat scanner, which is focuses on a dead fat, the fish which got dead. So every fish which got dead is gonna scan in a dead fat scanner, and uh, different uh, uh, 
but irregularity such as is there any bones is, is there any uh, skin removal uh, so all this thing is identified other than that what are the you know total number of fish that uh, got died each day and along with what are their biomass estimation okay to keep a track of like how much fish is dying and what is the weight of each fish so uh, that is the task that uh, we will be doing on a dead bear scanner so but that is the thing which we are doing uh, when fish got dead but if you are doing something uh, if fish got dead then there is no use of such technology because we should be more focusing on saving our fish from all those uh, diseases so there is one more part comes which is known as a welfare scanner in welfare scanner what we have done we have implemented camera some are 2d camera some are stereo cameras and then using those cameras we are capturing the pictures of all the uh, fam salmon and then we are trying to identify the irregularities and also trying to monitor the environment which is useful you know which is useful for the growth of salmon so these are the something that we are focusing on and uh, from technology point of view what we are trying to do is we are trying to perform key point detection classification uh, and then segmentation and many more so i will start uh, so i will start with uh, database and like and i have uh, taken only a very small example so basically uh, we had a thousand of uh, fish data and generally all this fish data lies uh, in a range of 3 kg to 5 kg so suppose uh, we want to go for annotation uh, because first step is always is the annotation so for annotation there are various tools that are available uh, uh, that is super annotate is one tool then there is see that is uh, another tool Uh, but I am using a free tool that is uh, from uh, open source label me annotation. Basic so basically, I have a lot of data sets. Some of the data sets are labeled by the company, but there are a lot of data sets which are not being annotated by industry. So I have to uh, uh, annotate it according to myself. For example, if I have to perform the key point detection. So, a uh, key point detection is something where uh, we, you know, find out a different uh, uh, fish point. Such as in this case, you can see I have uh, only targeted three key points. That is the fin point, nose point, and end point. But in other case, I I am targeting the seven of key points for finding out the length and width of the fish, which will be uh, then utilized to find out the uh, biomass yeah. estimation of the fish. So, uh, this is how I'm. Uh, I am performing the annotation. This is one example uh, of how I am doing the annotation. You can see there are different key points that I have annotated along with the detection box. Because uh, uh, this is a dead pet scanner example. So first thing in a dead pet scanner is we need to identify the fish. So we have a task of object detection first, and then followed by the other task. You know, such as key point detection, and we are also doing tracking, and then finding out uh, a different uh, length and area, and then finding out the bio uh, biomass of each fish or to predict it. So, coming to next, some of the uh, highlight image of uh, basically this I will be telling you one by one, but uh, just as a starting, what what I am going to tell you about it is uh, I will be talking about. Uh, Fish detection and segmentation. I will be talking about uh, identifying the bones uh, of the fish and then finding out the key point detection. So these are some of the highlight uh, images. So the methodology which I'm used is uh, I've used ResNet one hundred one model. So uh, why I have used this ResNet one hundred one model because uh, uh, obviously for detection it is very useful, but you can also use other uh, model that is Geolo. is also very popular and you can use that model but uh, my aim for using this resnet model is using that uh, same model i can go for you know key point detection only object detection and then go for intrinsic segmentation and then i can also perform tracking uh, tracking of the fish using the other algorithm so that is the main reason of using this resnet model obviously i have used other model but for this case study i am giving you the example of resnet model so a typical resnet model looks like this and then you can see this uh, sorry 
you can see this are the fish images so all these are the fish images from norway only and uh, uh, we had a coastal vision project in which you know all this fish data are collected and using those data what we are trying to identify is we we are trying to classify the fish and then uh, we are trying to you know finding out the behavioral analysis of fish because that is very important behavioral analysis is something which tells about uh, a fish health if suppose a fish is in stress so then he will do uh, he may do some fighting with other fish and then followed by uh, if he is not in good health then sometimes he don't eat uh, much and maybe sometimes he is more often he used to come in the surface of water so these are different activities which we can use you know to identify the fish health so uh, that part is known as uh, behavioral identification so that is something we will be targeting or uh, our aim is to go for behavioral identification so for that we have collected a lot of data set and right now in this stage what we are doing is uh, we are restrict uh, right now we have restricted ourselves to fish detection and then followed by their length measurement along with uh, and you know their classification so these are some tasks that uh, we have performed till now so uh, you can see this are some of sorry so you can see this are some of the images in which you can see each fish is detected so you can see there are different fish like this one is uh, uh, image on the right is of cod fish so we had uh, a couple of fish such as cod fish and uh, then along with uh, I'm not a biologist so I may not know some of the name like some as the on top left hand I seriously forgot the name but then we also had salmon and then we also had pink salmon so these are the different fish which we have already gone for detection and then for classification and then after that finding out the size of e each and individual fish so uh, that is about the one work that we have done in the coast vision project so uh, that is still in progress and next part of uh, this will be to perform the behavioral analysis uh, as i told you what are the different behavioral analysis that we are going to do it is uh, you know also very important if suppose uh, they are uh, all this fish if they are giving the egg so there are certain operations such as panning operation so we also need to look at all those operation in order to make sure that uh, they all those fish will deliver you know lay down their eggs uh, very efficiently so all this uh, analysis is uh, has been uh, so we are what we are trying to do is to identify all those behavior and try to track down whether the fish is in right state or uh, not in right uh, or in wrong state or sometimes what may happen uh, that there will be issue uh, when just uh, female trying to lay down the egg so uh, then definitely the other fish they try to come and uh, eat those eggs so then uh, definitely there will be different scenario so identify all those things uh, is our next step uh, there is another task that we will be doing is to identify each and individual fish. So that will be known as fish ID. So it's not species classification, but a individual fish classification, you know, uh, and to perform this, as you can see, this is uh, uh, this top left image. You can see there are different stripes in fish. Okay. So if we change the fish, so all those stripe patterns will be changed. So we can make use of AI fish, you know, in order to identify each and individual fish with a, a span of two years or three years. And there are certain, some research in uh, UIA that you can find out if you just visit the UIA, where they have done a face ID on a couple of fish, uh, four, five to 10 fish on a smaller data set. So that same thing we want to implement it for larger number of data sets so that is about one of my part uh a coastal vision project which is more research point of view uh, and now coming back to the other topic which is uh you know dead bed scanner which is more industry point of view in which we are working with industry so in that you can see this is a typical dead bed scanner example in which all those dead fish as you can say they are passing in from this dead bed scanner and so what we are doing we are trying to detect each and individual fish and then try to crop it uh, but before uh, before 
you know cropping it is also important because a certain fish is available for a certain length of time okay so we don't uh, want to go for segmentation for uh, for uh, each fish in each and every frame so what and there is sometimes issue with that sometimes fish are overlapping and performing segmentation or detection in that frames is uh, not ideal so what we have done uh, in a, a whole a video of what we have done is we have tried to find out the optimum frame for each and individual fish through tracking so that in order to identify the best frame for each particular fish uh, like here you can say there are four fish in an image so this all those four fish will be tracked throughout the uh, video or frames and then uh, we will try to find out which is the optimum frame for fish one fish two fish three fish four so that we can crop it and then go for further analysis uh, of it so this is one important task why it is very important because it saves on a lot of calculation because detection is very easy and it can be done very easily on a real time but if we want to go for other tasks such as segmentation uh, and then followed by a key point detection uh for biomass estimation so it will take a lot of time and and if you run it for each fish on each and individual frame so it will take a lot of computational tasks so that is something what we try to optimize you know to, to save on uh, time computation or or to reduce the computation complexity so you can see while tracking uh so we have tracked and then followed by individual fish uh it's been cropped and then uh, it has been gone for biomass estimation. So you can see we have also gone for fish counting. So uh, the, we have been count, counting the fish based on the tracking. Okay. And then at the end, we are trying to find out uh, the average biomass estimation. So this is some some example of weight estimation that I can uh, I want to just highlight. So you can see what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out uh, the different uh, area and then length of a fish and then based upon it you can see the actual weight is 4 kg approximate uh, 4 kg and 63 grams and here the predicted weight is 4 kg and 18 grams similarly if we have different uh, fish so their actual weight is uh, almost 4 kg and here uh, the predicted weight is 4.1 kg so you can see uh, we had a pretty much accuracy of for more than 95 percent and the company want accuracy of 95 percent sufficient because uh they are they don't want to calculate the you know biomass estimation of each and individual fish they want to uh find out the biomass estimation for average fish so in a sense that if there is more than 95 percent accuracy and then on an average uh there is a chance that uh it will be same okay so uh, this is the whole thing that we have for done you know for for biomass estimation uh, which involves tracking and then counting of fish and then followed by key point detection there are some things that, that we have also done is like you know it is also important to take a count of how many fish is got mature and then how much uh fish they suffers from any wound or something like that so we have also made a simple classification in which you know uh, based on uh, detection we just fed it to our uh, model and then just try to predict whether uh, the fish is suffer uh, from any wound or it or whether the fish is having maturity or not so this is some also something that we are also trying to do for each and individual fish and take account of you know uh so this is about a dead pet scanner and then uh, next thing yeah as i'm talking about the fish maturity so this is something fish maturity it is important to take care of uh, you know how much fish got mature because early maturity is an uh, issue for uh, aquatic salmon and uh, none of the farmer want uh, it okay so next thing is for a welfare scanner so welfare scanner is uh, is still on very early detection uh, sorry very early stages so what we have gone for is we have gone for a uh, different detection and classification so basically uh, we have classified and this is from industry point of view so basically they want to do different thing like large wound or it is small wound or uh, only the skin got removed 
So we have trained our detectors such that it can identify as well as classify the different kind of irregularities in phones. So this is something uh, what we have done on a welfare scanner. So this is a one part of welfare scanner. There are other parts which we are currently doing is there are some small fish which are, you know, we don't want them to be there. So we are also there to, we are also working currently, you know, to identify those fish, those unwanted fish there. Also, uh, we have only worked on bone detection and skin removal, but now current, uh, currently we are also working on, you know, there is there any fin damage because that is also a very important part because uh, this fin damage tells you a lot about the behavioral analysis or maybe some of the clues that whether the fish they are getting uh, early maturity or whether there is a fish are fighting or uh, also about their health and uh, so that is something that we are currently on on uh, trying to implement another thing is uh, in the future we are we will also try to go for uh, you know a disease classification through analysis of the fish gills so that is uh, gills of the fish are very important part of it and by analyzing those gills we can identify different diseases that a fish is suffering from so uh, that is something we'll be implementing in the near future also uh, and hopefully this will help you know farmer increasing their growth there is something which we are also trying to do as uh, for uh, uh, that is known as uh, sex determination because it is also very important uh, you know to uh, separate uh, fish when when they are in a small so that uh, they grow faster so that is something that we we are on it and uh, our near plans and uh, yeah, this thing I have already discussed, a simple model for classification of rice and wood. And some of the challenges that we want to tackle it in future, I think I should write it as a more as a future work rather than as a challenges. So uh, fish ID is something that to, uh, you know, identify each and individual fish that we'll be working on as well as on behavior identification. Fish disease identification, uh, as I have already discussed, there are lots of diseases, uh, you know, uh, through gills analysis we can perform. So that is something we can also look for. There is something known as bones and uh, it got healed. So we can also keep a track of, you know, if fish is affected from a bone. So uh, identify fish and then try to uh, keep a track of uh, healing process. Okay. Or it's not just a wound or any other disease healing process. So that is something uh, we are will be targeting to work in a new year future. Uh, from industry point of view, it is also very important. So this is some of my work. Uh, it's just a tip of iceberg. There are many things which, uh, you know, in Norway, many industry are doing. So I am only doing on a small part of it, which is uh, not so much. Uh, but I just try to present from an industry point of view what are the different work that they are uh, they want to do in the future and what currently they are doing. Uh, obviously, there will be many more work than other that other industries are also doing. Which uh, obviously in the next lecture you will have a more detailed uh, dis uh, discussion about it. But uh, that's all in my presentation. So this is some information of funding that we are getting. Uh, data, we cannot make it available to public uh, because it's a company data and more precisely it's a farmer data. So these are some of the references. I thank you for inviting me and letting me talk. And now the interesting point is the question. So if anyone wants to ask anything, please pitch it to me. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, Aditya. It was uh, such an interesting presentation and uh, so much uh, practical aspects and so many possible uh, applications. Um, uh, I have like a couple of uh, brief questions. So uh, yeah. can you explain a little more about like the data collection process or yeah. um, like how do you collect like uh, get the data specifically inside the water because the other part uh, like is uh, on the on a fixed camera with the dead bed right 
Uh, yeah. But um, I'm curious more about like the collection process uh, yeah. uh, in so, terms of the uh, C. So basically, I'm very happy that I don't need to perform all those data collection. So uh, IMR have already installed their cameras, their 2D stereo cameras. Uh, you know, in a, a different course, they have uh, also installed all those cameras. And if you go to Bergen Matra, so uh, they have collaborated with the farmers and they have installed their cam cameras uh, there. And uh, they just collect all those images and they just send all, uh, all these images in a cloud and where I get the, and then the company performs some of the annotations and whatever things they want to do. And then they just give the data to me. So thankfully, I don't need to collect the data, but there are uh, many more, uh, you know, cameras that have been installed in different parts on the, uh, specifically more on the north side of Norway. So this is, uh, uh, you know, a company point of view. But if I talk about Coast Vision project, so in that Coast Vision project, there are different countries like Sweden, uh, Finland, uh, Norway, uh, and then Denmark. So all these countries are, are involved and data has been collected, you know, from all the country. And then uh, IMR from Norway, IMR is one of the institute which is taking care of all those data. So they will be collecting all this data and uh, you know, they are labeling it. They are making uh, data sheets of uh, all those things to keep a track of each fish. And then they are uh, sending it to me. So, but for me, it's uh, not much. I know, but there are biologists and all who are working behind me uh, for this mm. data collection. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, quite uh, interesting. Mm, uh, by the way, question. Please, if, uh, yeah, I was going is, to ask the other people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I posted in the chat, uh, sorry. Uh, my question was how uh, uh, your model can recognize the difference between uh, wound wound detection because you had wound detection in your model yeah. and color sometimes maybe the part of the body yeah. is a special color and you, it's, it looks yeah. like a wound yeah yeah so uh, basically there are different pre-processing that I have done using a different color space so that has helped me you know in uh, to get rid of uh, all those classification uh, or you can say misclassification but it's not that every time i'm getting uh, you know good detection there are sometimes that there is misclassification of this but those are very rare like uh, less than two uh, percent uh, or something like that so company is okay with it and uh, but yeah still we suffer from a uh, quite a misclassification thank you very much Moin, uh, we, have, we have left it five more minutes. Yeah, um, does, does anyone else have any question? Then I think it's uh, good. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much again, Aditya. Thank you. And, thank uh, you. I will just uh, stop sharing. Sure. Um, yeah. Thank yeah. you. I would like to give the uh, platform to Adi. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, talk, Edita. And uh, now we move on to the next speaker, Aida Ashrafi. So Aida completed her bachelor's degree in information technology engineering in 2015. In 2018, she received her master's degree in artificial intelligence from KU Leuven, then Belgium. She had been a research assistant for two years at the same university, working mostly on the theory of machine learning. In 2021, she started her PhD at the University of Bergen, Norway. In her PhD, she analyzes the data about fishing vessels, the catch and the sails, and develops different machine learning models to help in the automation of the decision-making process in fisheries and to avoid overfishing. Her project is called The Use of AI for Sustainable Fisheries, which is a work in collaboration with the Norwegian Directorate of Fisheries. Her scientific interests are machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, data science, and optimization. And with that, I give the floor to Aida, and we're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thanks for the nice introduction. Um, I'll share my screen and continue. Can you see my PowerPoints? 
Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, uh, hi, I'm Ida, um, and I'm presenting uh, my PhD project uh, named Use of AI for Sustainable Fisheries. Um, this is a working collaboration with Norwegian Directorate of Fisheries, um, and um, my supervisors are um, Bernard Tessam from Infomedia Department, sorry, and uh, Katia Enberg from uh, Biology Department. It's an interdisciplinary project. Um, so I'm going through a short introduction and then data analysis. Um, the task and the method, um, the results, uh, and the uh, conclusion. Um, so um, the motivation behind this work is that um, the, we know the importance of uh, marine resources. Um, um, they, help us, they help us in economy, uh, providing food and balancing the ecosystem. Um, so because of all these benefits, uh, we need to um, use them in a sustainable way. Um, there are uh, sustainable development goals uh, by United Nations. Uh, and uh, one of them, which is SDG 14, um, is regarding uh, the life below water. Uh, and that's uh, where uh, my project um, is related. Uh, so um, there are some regulations and uh, special quotas uh, for um, fishing boats or fishing vessels, um, which are defined by um, different directorates uh, who are uh, doing the surveillance and monitoring these vessels. Uh, but when they are in the high seas, uh, it is hard to monitor them. Um, and that's uh, where machine learning comes in. And um, we uh, think that uh, it can help to analyze this data and uh, find a better, better way to uh, monitor um, the vessels. Uh, so um, the goal is that to use machine learning to avoid overexploitation of fish resources and specifically using deep learning methods uh, to detect fishing activities in real time uh, by classifying trajectories of fishing vessels. And I will go into uh, to explain um, the last part in more detail. Um, well, let's first talk about the data. Um, so um, we have different data sets and uh, by combining them, um, we can get um, um, a proper data set uh, with um, labels. Um, so um, the first one is uh, called AIS, Automatic Identification System. Um, it's satellite data, um, it includes position and uh, the latitude and longitude of a uh, fishing vessel. Uh, and the uh, time is the time that uh, these reports or messages are um, sent, uh, the speed of uh, the vessel uh, and the direction of the vessel. Um, the second data set uh, is called uh, daily catch activity reports. Um, and uh, we are actually using this uh, to help us label uh, the AIS data um, because it shows uh, the fishing intervals, the start and stop time of uh, the fishing activities. Um, the gear type that they are using, uh, the species that they are catching uh, and the round weight of the catch. Um, there are uh, also uh, departure reports and landing reports, uh, which uh, help us to find um, different um, fishing trips. Um, there are also uh, other features about uh, vessel, uh, including in the data set. Um, uh, another point uh, about the data is that, uh, in general, we have two different uh, gear types that these vessels are using. Um, uh, passive uh, are the ones that, um, sorry, um, that um, when uh, these vessels 
uh, these uh, targets um, or uh, here the fish uh, is approaching the net. Um, for example, long line uh, is one of them, um, and uh, you can see it um, on the right. Um, sorry, this one. Um, so these are um, the um, areas data on the map, um, and you can see that when they are uh, using different uh, type of gears, uh, the patterns would be different in the movement. Um, and that's why we have to um, categorize. Uh, and uh, the other type is uh, this active um, gear types, uh, which are the one that um, these vessels uh, are approaching the target, um, uh, like troll and uh, persane. So these active gear types uh, are the ones uh, which are um, uh, much easier to work with uh, because the patterns are more clear, the data uh, is um, much more accurate, and um, we can sort of trust on the data. Um, so um, that's why we started with uh, this active gear type. Um, and during this presentation, I will talk specifically about bottom troll. Um, you can see here it's um, the vertical uh, line is um, the number of vessels and the horizontal one is different gear types. Um, so um, this is um, just uh, for us to know that there are enough uh, data about bottom trolls. Um, that's the second one. And uh, this one is uh, the duration histogram uh, for three main um, uh, type of species that they catch. Uh, it's basically haddock, uh, cod, and a pollock, but it's in Norwegian, the names. But the important thing is that um, uh, what we consider is um, uh, we uh, get the threshold uh, for the duration uh, from this histogram and also talking to the experts uh, to just be sure. Uh, so less than 30 minutes and more than uh, 400 minutes uh, are the data that um, we uh, consider as outlier. And um, here you can see that's the bottom troll. It's uh, dragging, the net is dragging, uh, it's being dragged um, on the bottom of the sea. It's, it's, um, it's not that um, healthy for um, uh, the sea, but uh, that's a um, common way still. Um, so uh, about uh, the task uh, and um, our method, um, um, we are developing deep learning models uh, to classify the vessel's trajectories. So, um, and um, we have binary classification, fishing or not fishing. Uh, so here it's um, this image is uh, from um, um, paper uh, from the literature, sort of recent paper. Um, but uh, what we are doing is uh, very similar to what they are doing. But um, the data for us is uh, from um, different uh, resource and um, uh, for us is specifically Norwegian coast. Uh, and uh, we label our data ourselves, um, but uh, in this paper, they're using um, um, public data set uh, with uh, the labels, but um, with a very limited uh, amount of data with labels. But uh, basically the method is sort of the same. So uh, here we have uh, trajectories of vessels and then um, uh, we have different um sets of um features uh but basically they're in the form of trajectories and um we segment them um into smaller windows and then uh, classify these uh, smaller windows into fishing and not fishing uh and later when we get the output of the model uh, we compare it uh with um the reports by fishermen to see if there are mismatch if they are not saying the truth um because we know that there are some unreported um unregulated some fishy activities we call them um uh, on the high seas uh we want to see that um 
our model if it can uh, find those. And uh, here you can see these are the features that I already mentioned. Uh, this depth feature uh, still not included in our data set, but um, we have plans to do it. And then uh, we believe, I mean, the experts believe that it can help lots to um, recognize um, and um, classify uh, fishing and not fishing. Um, and this is also, um, of course, our, um, the label fishing or not fishing. Um, so about uh, the result, uh, we are uh, using um, neural network. Um, the, um, I will show you um, the results using different architectures. But uh, basically, because the data is in the form of a time series, um, the first thing you can think is that um, uh, we need some uh, sort of model which consider temporal dependency. So either LSTM, RNN, 1D, CNN, these are uh, the ones which are more common. Um, so with only one layer of LSTM uh, and um, uh, not that much number of hidden units, and um, you can, uh, and uh, with the uh, dropout rate um, 0.5, uh, in two dense layers, uh, ReLU and softmax uh, activations, um, we can achieve uh, around 90% accuracy. Um, sorry. And you can see here, um, just to see that uh, it's doing uh, something reasonable and it's learning uh, the patterns. Um, so you can see the uh, true positive and true negative um, Samples are uh, quite high. Um, this is on the test set. Um, and these two false positive and false negative uh, are much lower. Um, and uh, of course, these are the exact numbers, um, but the average of uh, 10 time uh, training. Um, so um, you can see here, even with a fully connected neural network, uh, which is not uh, something you normally use on the time series. But since uh, we didn't have that many uh, features, we wanted to try this to see the difference. Uh, so of course, LSTM works better, but the difference is not that much, you can see. Um, but still, um, these LSTM, RNN, and one day CNN, uh, which consider temporal dependency, works uh, slightly better. Um, of course, there is a, a big challenge, and it's uh, coming um, from the literature that um, there are a um, limited number of um, labeled data. And, and that's because uh, this um, labeling specifically for our test um, is very um, costly. And um, it's actually not that visible because um, even some experts doesn't know all the patterns um, for all the gear types. Uh, so um, there's a challenge. Uh, we talked to them uh, because um, unlike the other works uh, from the literature, uh, we have access to the this DCA uh, reports. Um, so, uh, and uh, the experts who know much more than us, and they told us, uh, okay, uh, the fishermen uh, from Norway are um, to some level uh, trustworthy. Um, so you can use um, the uh, kind of the um, those uh, daily catch reports um, from the fishermen. Uh, but the thing is that uh, you have to remove the outliers, of course. Um, uh, so um, I mentioned that duration. So we remove uh, very long and very short duration um, to just filter the mistake and reports and then use that as not exactly true labels, but uh, the closer um, option we can uh, get. Um, so uh, by saying that, I want uh, to mention that, um, um, for example, and um, we um, 
used, uh, we train uh, the data and uh, a non outliers data set. And uh, when we test it on the non outliers, uh, of course, we get um, much more accuracy, but on the outliers, it still. Um, um, kind of uh, good, but the thing is that um, these outliers are the ones that um, there have some um, there, there is some mistakes, uh, of course, because uh, the, the reports um, are uh, not correct based on the experts. So basically, we are hoping that uh, this event can help to uh, just um, kind of correct the outliers. Um, and um, this um, second table uh, shows that um, if I train it on uh, one year, can I test it uh, on the other years um, if um, the pattern doesn't change uh, during different years? And um, you can say sort of, um, it says that maybe, um, in 2020, there are some differences because of also the COVID. Um, but um, basically, that's a hypothesis. But in general, um, the difference is not that much. So uh, we think the patterns are sort of the same. Um, and uh, this is the speed analysis. So um, the according to the literature, um, the most contributing uh, feature is speed in finding the patterns, specifically in active urethites and bottom troll. Um, so um, this uh, vertical um, line is, an, uh, the vertical axis is the speed um, and um, the horizontal is time. And it's, um, I just picked up some samples from different years, from different vessels and to see the difference between the prediction on the, sorry, on the left, uh, and uh, the reports by the fishermen on the right. Um, so um, these are specifically the parts which are different that I put in a circle. Uh, and uh, here, for example, in uh, the blue lines are uh, the, uh, sorry, the blue dots are the fishing and uh, the um, red ones are not fishing. Um, and these are um, basically different data points. So uh, from the same vessel, of course. Um, and you can see sometimes um, the prediction shows that they are doing fishing, uh, but they report it as non-fishing. And um, by checking the data set, uh, I can see that um, there are some stability in the speed when they are doing fishing. Um, so, um, it's, uh, these reports are very suspicious. Um, and uh, same thing happens here. Um, but this one is actually um, opposite. So uh, we, we believe that um, they are not doing fishing, but they report it as fishing. Uh, and this one, even it's outlier. Um, so uh, you can see uh, it is different um, since it is outlier and even the speed is quite high. So um, here, uh, for this kind of example, um, talking to the experts, we think that uh, they don't um, kind of uh, report until they finish the activity. And later, they will just do the reports kind of by delay. And they forgot uh, where it was exactly and what was the numbers. So that's why um, uh, we think that this fishing intervals are not correct. Um, and uh, to uh, conclude, um, we developed deep learning models to detect fishing activities using the AAS and um, DCA reports, and also to uh, avoid overfishing. Uh, we face lack of true labels, uh, but still we came up with uh, some uh, simple auto labeling strategy, and still uh, the results were promising. Um, uh, we think that uh, talking to the experts um, and uh, getting um, using more uh, visualization techniques um, because that's that's the way that we uh, interact with them. Um, 
um, we can get uh, closer labels to the true labels. And that could help a lot. Um, we believe that the next step could be that now we have some uh, very, very um, close labels to the true labels. And then we can do some maybe uh, semi-supervised um, um, methods. Um, so uh, yeah, that would be the, the next step. And um, thank you for your attention. And if there are questions, uh, I would be happy to answer. Yeah, thank you for the interesting presentation. I, I have a few questions and then we'll see if others also have some questions. So the first question is related to the results that you showed when you had this uh, outliers and non-outliers data set. Yeah. Right. Uh, so in this data set, do you like first train on a data set with no outliers and test on a similar data set and then do the same, like train on a data set with outliers and test on a data set with outliers, or do you just train on one data set and then test on both, if you see what I mean? Yeah, um, I uh, I only train on non-outliers uh, for, um, so um, I train on non-outliers and test it on non-outliers, also train it still on non-outliers and test it on the outliers. Yeah, I see. Yeah, uh, and also another question related to the yeah, uh, like all the tasks that you have in terms of classification. How balanced is the data set that you have in terms of classes? Actually, the the good thing is that it's quite balanced. Um, so it's not uh, like um that you need to do some anomaly detection. It's um uh, like in the worst case, maybe fifty five to forty five. Hmm. So it's quite balanced, I would say. No, no, thank you. Do you... Yes, please, Uh I posted a question actually in chat also. <clears throat> Regarding the uh, Barnard classification, you have mentioned that you use Barnard classification fishing and not fishing. Uh, what if, uh, because you are using ReLU as activation function, what if we replace ReLU with sigmoid and score to the phishing according to the, because you have temporal data and say, for example, it is a spring, this, uh, for example, I'm not expert in phishing, it is a spring, the score of phishing is uh, 0.2 or 20%, therefore it's not good, good time for phishing. Uh, what's your idea if we start this challenge? Um, actually, I, I, I've tried different activation functions, sigmoid, uh, but um, uh, I also did consider different uh, features, um, like uh, the time of the year, and it was uh, the month um, as a cyclic feature. Um, but, um, and uh, even in this case, as you can see, uh, we have like um, four or five years to train uh, on. Um, I still couldn't see that much like improvement adding uh, the a month of the year. Um, so um, I don't know, it's because of the, the nature of the data um that that's something maybe the experts who knows the area at the norwegian coast can say better but um we were hoping to see a much more difference of course in the future we will add much more data um but um so um i at least in practice i didn't see that uh, much help using um the seasonality um but um but i didn't consider both of them at the same time like seasonality with uh weight on um uh the different labels and um also with a sigmoid um i uh, could try that okay. thank you Aida. thank you thank you do you have any other questions uh yeah um, i have one Yes, please. Uh, no, but rather than a question, just uh, information. First of all, it's a very nice presentation, and uh, thank you. Like uh, this is something which uh, I was also wanted to do in uh, some time, but uh, 
obviously i don't have time and uh in noora they also had this competition for uh, this so i have registered but i have not been able to uh some lack of time maybe but then i thought so uh, my question is uh, is all this work uh, you know uh like industry are currently using all this thing or uh, they are using Yeah, actually, um, I, I also kind of um, entered the competition, but in the middle, uh, our team was decide they decided not to continue. Uh, okay. But the, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, this uh, DCA um, data, Daily Catch Reports, uh, was the part of that uh, competition. Yeah. And um, it is publicly available. That that's a good thing about uh, this data. Uh, but the AIS data is not, it's um, something I got from coastal administration. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, I, I, they have lots and lots of data, but uh, they don't use it that much. At least they don't okay. use machine learning methods. It's just some um, very um, common statistical methods that they are using now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, do we have any other questions? Okay, if we don't have any more questions, then I think I'll uh, thank the speakers again for the nice presentations. And also, uh, I would like to also thank my colleagues, Sajad and uh, Mayim. Thank you. That, uh, I'd like to round off uh, the second uh, webinar and uh, see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye.